As a boy, Cornelius worked with his father on the water and attended school briefly. When Vanderbilt was a teen, he transported cargo around the New York Harbor. Eventually, he acquired a fleet of small boats and learned about shipping design. He ended up pursuing the shipping career along with railroad tycoons. He was a self-made multimillionaire who became one of the wealthiest Americans of the 19th century. Late 1820s, he went into business on his own, building steamships and operating ferry lines around the New York region. In the early 1850s, during the California Gold Rush, a time before transcontinental railroads, Vanderbilt launched a steamship service that transported prospectors from New York to San Francisco, a route across Nicaragua. Vanderbilt's new line was an instant success, earning more than $1 million a year, although that $1 million would be about $26 million in today's money. In the 1860s, Vanderbilt shifted his focus from shipping to the railroad industry. He gained control of a number of railway lines operating between Chicago and New York and established an interregional railroad system. Vanderbilt was the driving force between the construction of Manhattan's Grand Central Depot, which opened in, in 1871. The station eventually was torn down and replaced by the present-day Grand Central Terminal, which opened in 1913. Cornelius Vanderbilt apparently treated his employees badly, offering them very low wages, poor working conditions, and long working hours. Vanderbilt was perceived by his contemporaries as a ruthless character who spent too little time worrying about people's perception about him. Vanderbilt did not own grand homes or give away much of his vast wealth to charitable causes. The only substantial philanthropic donation he made was in 1873, towards the end of his life, when he gave $1 million to build and endow Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. He left the rest of his money for his family, mostly his oldest son. Vanderbilt was a robber baron or captain of industry because he would stop at nothing to achieve great wealth. Him and others, including people like Rockefeller and Ford, were accused of exploiting workers and forcing horrible working conditions and unfair labor practices upon the workers. These men were viewed as industrious leaders who transformed the American economy with their business skills. They were praised for their skills as well as their philanthropy.